By the mid-19th century, Torquay was taking on the characteristics of a, a large urban resort. It was also saw itself very much as the elite resort around the country. There was a number of uh, other resorts. There were 48 uh, tourist resorts around Britain and sort of, sort of a halo around the entire country. Um, what we wanted to be like was we wanted to be the premier. We didn't want to be like Margate or Blackpool. So uh, we attracted some of the great um, intellects of the 19th century. So the people that came to Torquay were um, people who ended up sort of writing some of the sort of darker side of, um, of British literature. So Robert Louis Stevenson, Charles Dickens, uh, Rudyard Kipling, Oscar Wilde. So we attracted all of those. So we, we had a very, uh, very sort of productive uh, interest in ideas other than mainstream Christianity. Uh, so this a whole town was very much of a sort of battleground of ideas and a lot of those ideas were outside of the mainstream. So we had um, a big increase in ideas around, uh, around spiritualism. So from the 1850s uh, with the Fox sisters in America uh, and that whole idea of spiritualism, the idea that you could actually uh, talk to the dead and commune with the dead became immensely popular in Torquay. So at, at any one time, uh, you could go, go to a seance in possibly half a dozen different places uh, around Torquay, and they used to compete with each other. So we've got Elizabeth Barrett Browning really interested in this. The other thing about spiritualism, it was, it was extremely uh, respectable. Queen Victoria was supposed to have um, consorted with spiritualists. And, and be, it became very much a competitive environment. So um, if you had two, two individual spiritualists offering a seance, you then had to compete with each other. So your seance had to be a bit more exciting than the other person's seance. So you might have uh, materializations of things. You might have people coming back from the dead. You might get people possessed. And it started off with table wrapping and then, then it became more and more outlandish. Now in the 1880s, uh, a lot of people were sort of getting very suspicious of this. And there was a spiritualist called D.D. Hume, who was, who was a sort of very popular character. Uh, around the country and he used to tour around doing sort of uh, seances for the uh, for the aristocracy. Uh, he, his downfall came when he was uh, approached by an elderly very rich lady to contact her husband. Uh, what happened then was the elderly, <laughs> the elderly lady's departed husband actually said to Dee Home that uh, that this elderly lady ought to give him large amounts of money now, her relatives and herself suddenly came to their senses and realised that it possibly wasn't the dead husband that was saying this. So there was an enormous and very damaging court case for spiritualism. And from then on, people started looking at spiritualists much more uh, suspiciously. Uh, in the 1880s, we had the development of the Society of Psychical Research. Uh, now, a lot of those members were actually spiritualists, and they were trying to sort of weed out the fake spiritualists from what they thought were the real spiritualists. And they, they had around 2,000... Um, uh, investigations and they didn't find any real real evidence that didn't stop them um, but it, what it did do is it really exposed some of these fakes and then a lot of the spirits either gave up or they went underground and a lot of them sort of emigrated to Australia but Torquay had that uh, occult tradition and it has that occult tradition still and more people for example believe in ghosts in Torquay than anywhere else in Britain.